Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Unity of Love and Understanding Circle of Love. And uh, we'd like to start off with a prayer. So as we turn within in this very moment and touch that secret, sacred place of the Most High that's deep within our very being, let's know that it's always there. It never leaves us. That ever, whatever needs or questions we have, it's there to answer and to fulfill them. So in this moment, we know that all is good. We woke up this morning, we're awake, we're alive. And we're open to learning and growing and sharing. So we bless this service, we bless each other, and we just know that there is a divine order that's unfolding right here and right now. And we give thanks for it. We simply allow it to be, and so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, you want to lead us in our congregational song? As I say my open heart my love I come to know as I come to know my love I allow my love to grow as I Thank you, Brother Ed. Well, we're continuing on this week with the 12 powers uh, by Charles and Cora Fillmore, which is this book. And the reading today is regarding the power order. It is your privilege to be free as the birds, the trees, the flowers. They toil not, neither do they spin but are always obedient to the divine instinct. And their every day is the Sabbath. They stand in no fear of an angry God, though they build a nest, spread a leaf, or open a petal on the first day or on the seventh day. All days are holy days to them. They live in the omnipresence, always doing the will of him who sent them. It is our duty to do likewise. The actual chapter in the book is called Spiritual Law and Order. And if you think about it, laws have been in existence since the beginning of mankind. When people started forming communities, they created laws to protect themselves. And along the way, there was... Uh, well, they shifted into something else, into a form of spirituality, where their own fears and, and lack of knowledge had them adore things like rocks and, 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 and things outside of themselves. 
people who are very close to nature, like the Native Americans or other indigenous people, recognize that those things outside of themselves were simply expressions of the one divine that was everywhere. And there was a deep respect for it, a respect for the animals, for the plants, for each other. Laws have shifted and changed along the way. And our spirituality has shifted and changed. Spiritual leaders emerged. You had Abraham, you had Moses, you had Jesus, you had Muhammad, you had Buddha, you had Lord Krishna. All of them had a following of individuals who followed the various practices and, and principles. Unfortunately, a lot of those principles were distorted. There were books written in regards to all of them. And, and all of those books were primarily a way for people to, of, people to understand how they should live their life. What was this reading about was that in the old days, in the Hebrew religion, one of the laws of one of hundreds of laws, one of the laws was that you weren't allowed to work on the Sabbath. That was a day that supposedly the Lord rested after he created the, the universe. Well, that law was primarily for people to stop and to take account of the blessings that were all around them things that they called God were the energy that created everything around them and continued to create. And, and it was about a recollection of that, a remembering of that, appreciation of that. But the laws were taken by individuals and they were misinterpreted. They were used to control people. That law turned into something where if you did any work on the Sabbath, you could be put to death. There's no angry God like that. No God, no, no energy, a creative energy that created you, me, and this entire universe wants you to end your life because you worked on a certain day. That's why this reading is about how the animals and the plants all continue to do what they do every day of the week. What has happened in what we call religion, in most religions, there is a dogma, man-made laws. There are interpretations. In the old days of the Hebrew religion, it was the scribes and the, the Pharisees who interpreted what people were allowed to do and not allowed to do. And they control the people with that. But the same thing happens today. All of these religions have an element of control within them. And that's all man-made. Those are not things that were meant to be. I'm a Italian and Irish kid. I was born and raised in New York, and, and my parents were Roman Catholic. My dad and my mom, they, they practiced. They were at church every Sunday. They, they did what they needed to do to be in, in alignment with what the church was teaching. One of the rules of the church was that you were not allowed to eat meat on Friday because that was a day that Jesus had died on the cross, and we were supposed to remember that day by not eating meat. Now, Jesus never told you that. It was never a necessity to do that according to spiritual law, but it was a man-made law. And, and my father would never break that law, 
ever, ever. And I remember during one of the councils that they had, I think it was John the 23rd, said that it was okay to eat meat on Friday. Well, my father and my mother being very devout Catholics said, okay, well, I guess we can. And then somewhere along the way, 5, 10, 15 years later, I don't remember how much, they changed the law again. And I tried to explain to my father how foolish these things were. How could it be changed here and, not, and then changed again and so on? And he went back to not eating meat on Friday. And I said, uh, so does this mean that for that time that you ate meat on Friday, you're going to go to hell when you die? That's what you were taught. He got so nervous. He got so upset. I'm sorry that I had even said it to him because I upset him that much. But the reality is that when you step back and you look at the things that a lot of religions profess, then what they're trying to tell you are man-made things rather than spiritual things. Jesus tried to show the people the same thing. The Pharisees would get very upset with him because he would heal the sick on a Sunday. I'm sorry, on a, a Saturday, a Sabbath. What? You mean you can't do that? Oh, that's considered working and he should die? He went to the field and he picked a piece of wheat. And just by doing that, it was considered work. And they wanted, again, to put him to death. Very interesting how these silly rules became embedded in our society. Because they're not real. They're absolutely, totally man-made. There's really only two rules that every religion, I don't care whether it's Christianity, whether it's uh, uh, Buddhism, it's Hindu, it's uh, Muslim, it's Confucianism, it doesn't matter what it is. They basically have two elements to them, two principles that are at the baseline of every religion out there. One is to love and appreciate whatever you call God. And God is that creative energy that's everywhere present and continues to create. And if you love and appreciate it, you would love and appreciate everything that is created, which includes this earth, the animals, the plants, everything. You would love and appreciate it. I think we could step back right now and look at the news that we've been seeing about the floods in China, the floods in, in Germany, the fires in, in the Northeast, uh, sorry, the Northwest, the temperatures around the North Pole that are up into 100 degrees that have never, ever been that way before that we could record. We obviously are not taking very good care of this planet. We're not appreciating it the way that it was intended to be. That's part of loving God. And then the other thing is that we are to love our neighbor or each other as we would like to be loved, as we would like to be appreciated, as we would like to be treated. We would love the other person. That means that before you decide to do something of your own accord, for your own benefit, you think about what is the ramification to my neighbor? You know, I, I write a, a newsletter article every week that's the core of what I'm about to talk about. And, and I got some feedback from people this week. And it was very interesting that 
some of the people were people who uh, were talking about not wearing masks, not wanting to wear masks, and 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 not uh, not wanting to get a uh, a vaccine. And they thought I was telling them that it was okay, that they were supposed to be able to do what they wanted to do. And I wrote them back, that's just the opposite. That to wear a mask means that you're not concerned just about you, you're concerned about your neighbor. To get a vaccine, it's not just about you, it's that you're not transmitting it to someone else. It's very interesting because the individuals who are me, 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 me have no consideration about other people that they interact with. My freedom is dependent on your freedom. My, my ability to enjoy life is totally interacted and, and matrixed with how you can enjoy life. You know, for 13 years, I, uh, I was co-director of a homeless ministry at the Agape Spiritual Center. And one of the reasons why I did that was because, because I care about people. I am my brother's keeper. What happens to someone else does have a direct effect on me. When we understand that, when we get clear that we need to help each other, that we need to treat each other as we would like to be treated, then all the things, the, the challenges and issues and, and problems that we're having as a community, as a nation, as a world, they would all go away. Because they couldn't exist if you truly, truly believed that you cared about the person that you don't even know as much as yourself. You know, one of the problems that we have with this pandemic is that, yes, we may have a lot of people that have been vaccinated, but most of the poor countries around the world have almost no people vaccinated. Yes, we're starting to give vaccines to people, but now, because it's so far down the line, they have to be able to deliver them and, and give them to the people and, and be able to do it in a timely fashion. Because what we found out is that if everyone is not vaccinated, that includes all the people who couldn't afford this and all the countries that couldn't afford it, then it will have a direct dependency on us. Everything that we do touches other lives. And all other lives, what things that they do, we're not isolated. They have a ramification. They have an effect on us. We have to start learning that there is a divine order here. There is a spiritual law and order, which is different than what we call law and order. What we call law and order is keeping people controlled. Spiritual law and order is about doing the things set forth for you to do that are going to not just help you, but help the rest of the earth and everyone on it. Help the planet, help the animals, help, because we are so dependent on the smallest animal. They, they had an article just recently that I read about uh, bees. And you say to yourself, what, what, bees are bees, right? Well, I, you know, I, I like honey, but so what? Well, down at that level, bees, the most important factor is that they pollinate other things. They pollinate uh, plants. Those plants then can continue to grow. 
Those plants are eaten by other animals. Other animals eat them. We eat animals, we eat the plants, and so on. It's a progression that when that bee stops doing what it's doing, it affects all the way up and down the line. Just that little bee. And that bees, because of our pesticides, are dying off in millions. We're killing ourselves. We can't blame God. We can't blame something else out there. We are doing things to ourselves. Four years ago, this country was under this control that believed that there was nothing that we could do that wasn't good for business. We had to do everything that was good for business. And what was good for business at that time was, quote, quote, to let the environment do what it was going to do. We're beginning to see the price of it right now. We're beginning to pay that price. It's just starting. You know, I, I just saw a uh, program about uh, what's happening right now with all of these events around the world, with the the uh, the floods and the the uh, water that's being created from the Arctic, and uh, now that's that's just melting, and and the Antarctic is melting. All of this is happening a lot more rapidly than scientists pred predicted. We may very well be at a point of no return. We may be. But I believe that there is spiritual law and order. And when we come into alignment with it, everything else does too. But we have to be clear for ourselves and for everyone else. We can't say that we're going to do something to change as soon as somebody else does, as soon as some other state does, as soon as the, the country does, as soon as another country does it, we'll do it. No. Change begins with you and with me. We have to commit to ourselves that we're going to do something to be better for ourselves, the environment, for our fellow traveler on this thing called life, everyone, not just our family and friends, that our concern is for everyone. Because with a spiritual order, spiritual law and order in alignment can make all things right again. It's never too late. But we need to begin. It begins with each one of us. In our radiation to talk to another person and let them talk to another person and another person. So what you hear today needs to be repeated over and over and over again until people start to realize that we are not only our brother's keeper, but the keeper of this planet and everything therein. It's our charge. That's spiritual law and order. So let's get still for a moment. So it's in the moment that we see clearly. We see ourselves, our friends, our family, and the entire world from a different perspective. We are all brothers and sisters. There is nothing outside of us 
it is all embraced within us. And as we see from that perspective, as we act from that perspective, as we speak from that perspective, everything shifts within us and with those we touch. And that shift is for the divine good of all. That shift is for our planet, our family, our friends, for each other. I bless all those who can't see. As Jesus would say, forgive them, Father. They know not what they're doing. But we do. And by knowing, we have the power to shift and change. By knowing, we have the strength because we're tapped into the infinite strength of God, the infinite wisdom of God, the infinite guidance and order of God. And it's that power that does and changes all things. So we bless each other. We bless everyone around this, this planet, the entire universe. We know that we're all connected. And what happens in our personal space affects everyone. There was a saying that we are so powerful that if we move our pinky, something shifts somewhere in the universe. Let's move our consciousness. Let's get in the order that's divine. Let's get in the law that's spiritual. Let's allow those ideas to flow through us and to be the activity of our, our thoughts, our words, and our actions. Let's heal this planet. Let's heal this world and, and humanity. We accept this. And together, with the consciousness of unity, we shift and change. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, life. And so it is. And so I allow it to be. Amen. Amen. Brother Ed, would you? Uh... Give us a little music.
Sparks of passion flashing in the night, setting hearts on fire. Folks falling in love at first sight, getting swept away by their desire. Why don't we be one of them? We could find out what one kiss could become. Why don't we be one of them, darling? Why don't we be, why don't we be one? We were wandering Through a dream that we all share And where we belong was just a little further on When we wake up, we'll be there Sometimes I think we're already there But we let it pass us by Come take a walk in the cool air. See those stars up in the sky Why don't we be one of them? The moment we've been waiting for has come. Could bring heaven right here, right now, with just what we have and what we know. We could bring heaven some way, somehow. We could plant the seeds and watch them grow. Bring a little heaven when you come, little darling. Leave a little heaven when you go. Keep a little heaven deep down in your soul. So we remember and so you know, so you know. We are one.
Thank you, Brother Ed. That was beautiful. Well, this is our conscious sharing time. So I'm going to put up our donation information. So if you have an opportunity, you can go to our website and make a donation, secure donation online, or you can mail a check to our offices that are listed here at, uh, in Marina Del Rey. So just put your hand on your heart for a moment. And just know that whatever you give, whatever it is, you give with and through and as love. That's who we are. That's the principle that we live by. Love. And it's that love that allows us to do the things that we do and, and be able to expand our consciousness and embrace other people. So we bless the gift. We bless the giver. We bless the idea that God had when it thought of each of us. Thank you. For Thank you. And so it is. Amen. I'm going to uh, put up the words for our prayer protection. We'll do that together. And let's say this together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ed, for your music. Appreciate that. Before I end the... Uh, uh, the recording, we'll do our final prayer. But I want to remind you, if you're seeing this on video, please join us any Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you can go to our website of unityofloveandyou.org and the link, which changes, the link will be there for you just to click on at that time. You'll be admitted into from a room, a waiting room, and you'll be part of the service. Because it's not just to see the service, because what we do after we finish recording is that all of us get an opportunity to share, share our thoughts about the topic, about each other, about things that are going on with us. And to me, that's more important than my words or even uh, Ed's amazing music. Your sharing is, is something we all learn from. We all do. I learn. We all learn. So please join us any Sunday. So let's finish with a prayer here. Heavenly Father, I know that you always hear me. And in this moment, love. In this moment, as Brother Ed said, we are one. We always have been, we ever shall be. We're one with you, we're one with each other, we're one with this planet. We can't be separated from that. It's impossible. It's intrinsically inside of each one of us to feel and see and to know that we're interacting with one another every day, every moment. And that what you think, what you say, what you do affects everyone. We're all conscious. We're working awake and aware. Being love, acting as love, sharing love. Now and forever. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say today. So.